anybody can hear me out there, we have several states that are in a not so good, a not so good position. Take back out this. Uh, yep. That's a Charlotte. Charlotte, you got a pretty big storm coming towards you. It's dropping a lot of rain all throughout North Carolina, southern West Virginia, Virginia, Tennessee, Atlanta, Alabama, Mississippi on the eastern corridor, but it's about gone. The storm fronts are building past the mountain ranges on the right east of the Appalachian Mountains. There's somewhat of a vortice forming, causing a lot of moisture to be picked up there. Now, a lot of people were surprised by these storms. Many homes are damaged along that mountain range. And, you know, if this is any indication of what is to come, I, I just hope that people are paying attention. I really do. Um, Maine is, is, of course, they're, they're somewhat used to flooding. Massachusetts, Connecticut, Delaware, all those places, New Jersey, uh, New York, obviously. Yeah, these developing storms, if this is any indication of what we're going to continue to have due to uh, some of the frontal systems, folks, flooding is going to be almost unbearable. We have a large heat boom with a low pressure system sitting almost on top of uh, Virginia. And they're not showing the one, uh, the uh, low pressure system that is next to a high on the East Coast. They're not showing that for some reason, but there is a, if you guys look on your weather maps, you'll see a low pressure system uh, right above Texas. And that, Pressure system is a very stubborn, has a very stubborn low. Fortunately, we have a high that's going to disrupt that low pressure system, but it's going to squeeze out every drop of moisture it can. I'm coming on to let you guys know this moisture is going to get worse and worse. And if you guys live in any area that is flood prone or possibly when it's raining, you know, it's water settling in your yards or something like that, make sure. You don't wait on warnings or advisories, but make sure you're doing whatever you can do to uh, get ready for water inundation. Make sure that you guys do that. Many people will not do that, as they did not tonight, or today rather, and they were quite surprised. We did get a few messages from some alarmed individuals, some townhouses and some apartment complexes, and homes and neighborhoods destroyed, absolutely destroyed from water. Sewage water starting back up in water treatment plants in several areas. These type of things will always happen with uh, heavy rainfall. Here's the issue, though. These were unforecasted heavy rainfall uh, events. So no one counted on these events taking place, many of them. No one forecasted these. And well, I'll say it again. I've said this a few times. I'll say it again. Proper advisements for these things. Of course, everybody can't see everything, right? At some point, you've got to really take precautions against things that possibly you never thought would hit near your area. As these seasons continue to go on and the temperatures get hotter, the energy of the atmosphere is going to become enormous to the point where winds are going to be unsurvivable in quite a few places, right? And in fact, wind is going to be a direct enemy of, of most of uh, the inhabitants of the USA. It's going to cause a lot of damage, the wind all by itself without water. Water is just going to exacerbate the issue. And of course, these developing storms, hail, things that go with it, are going to be quite, uh, quite deadly. Quite deadly. The the casualty count will begin to build up, folks. So please do everything you can, right, to learn the topology around your own area uh, and to take precautions. Right? Uh, if if you can, you know, 
that that if you have a basement, if you have a, a uh, your your house is at low level, and you've been wanting to find a way to divert water, or something like that, and you have the means to do it. Do it. Do it. Because this water is going to become a problem, right? Now we all knew this; these moments were coming, right? Uh, we knew it, but now the world needs to know it, right? And we all know the world's not going to take things seriously until it takes them out. Then after that, they still won't take it seriously. So in some cases, especially dealing with the elderly, you're going to have to, um, you know, if you can, if you have that type of heart, help them out as much as you can, as much as you can. You know, I know some of us are elderly ourselves, but we do our best to help others out who uh, may not have that wherewithal and the strength uh, for proper uh, preparations. Also, accountability. In these storms like this, right, it's a good time to really find out who is who around you so that you can help those who cannot help themselves and check on them. Please don't leave them stranded uh, in these type storms and things like that, right? A phone number uh, just to keep in touch with them while it's happening to to give them some type of assurance that somebody's looking out for them, right? Do that as much as you're able, as much as you're able. I know personally, uh, on a personal level, just today, uh, we, a, a couple of colleagues of mine, we had to go get about 15 people. Uh, from locations in various parts of, of the USA. We were talking, and these storms were breaking out, and we all saw the same thing. But we had to go get some folks. So, you know, you guys can do the exact same thing. Uh, but look out for the elderly. Look out for those who can't look out for themselves. All right? Do the best you can. Some people had uh, some animals were tied up in some flood-prone areas, and these poor little puppies, they were puppies, they were swimming for dear life, right? Uh, somebody saw them and got them, but, you know, we're going to have things like that happen. So you had to really prepare yourself uh, for the aftermath of such uh, things. And, folks, these storms are just beginning. It is. It's not something anybody wants to say, but they're just beginning. You know, in the Bible it says, nations in distress with perplexity the seas and the waves roaring. You know, for many years, that's been one of those scriptures that a lot of people looked at, and they just kind of, they kind of brushed it off. But if you look at that carefully, if you really look at that, it for one, it makes no sense. Right? Nations in distress with perplexity, the seas and the waves roaring. You can almost see that as the wind and the water, the ocean, it's going to cause massive distress in the earth. Think about it. Why would that, have, excuse me, that passage be followed by an out of place statement? And when you do your historical research into that passage, you can see it. So in the Bible, it's almost like the Bible is telling us, the Lord is telling us, we're going to have bad wind issues, wind and water. Wind and water. Wind and water. That does not have traction right now in a lot of people's ears. But it will when it gets. And people will perfectly understand. The word says they will consider it perfectly when it comes. No one will make an error in their consideration of what is coming. All right? I remind you also, the Bible has never been wrong. Never. It has a, it, it, people have their interpretations, their interpretations have been wrong, but the Bible itself has been a guide, nothing less than a guide to what we are going through, the progressive states of our lives, and everything else you can imagine. This warning about the winds and the waves is real. It's building. It's not going to go away, right? It's not. It's going to become one of those heart-wrenching issues that all of us are going to have to face. And I do believe it's going to come to a point where we're going to have the when the dry winds begin, that's when people 
when when neighborhoods, when cities, we're talking about here in the USA, when they're covered by dust and sand and debris. Can you imagine? Uh, you live in, say, North Carolina. Say you live in North Carolina or Georgia or a place like that. Right? You go outside and everything is covered with sand and dirt. And the winds are high, so high that you have to wear some sort of veil, respirator, goggles on when you go outside. Can you imagine a world like that? We're quickly approaching a time when everything will be that way, right? Also, I need to remind you, this year is going to be quite hot. We already knew that. Uh, we can see that by trending, right? And some of us have that intuitive insight to know it's going to be extremely hot. But there are lots of insects that have migrated. Lots of them. This year alone, the spider count will probably double. This year alone, it will likely double. You guys do understand what that means. There are going to be some strange conditions that people seem to exhibit due to spider bites they never knew they had. So that's another area you're going to have to watch out for and be careful. Um, as it gets hot, I personally would not, would not, you know how people go on vacations, they go out and do this, that, and the other in the sun. you got to be careful this year. This year is going to be no joke. The sun rays are going to hurt people, cause them to be sick. And you will notice this when you guys step out in the direct sunlight. And I know that's where you get your vitamin D from, but when you step out in direct sunlight, and you become nauseated, like a nausea you never had before. That will be due to exposure of a certain type of radiation, exotic radiation. These days are quickly approaching, right? It shouldn't be um, shocking to anybody, but everybody should be well advised as to the changes that are taking place. Never forget last year, the oceans were the hottest they have ever been. This year, that record's going to be smashed, right? We're going to have Hot temperatures in places we shouldn't have it. It's going to cause further ice melts. Right now, tonight, there's an emergency happening in both polar regions of the Earth. People are watching something very closely. I'm going to keep you guys updated here on Channel Zero. We actually have a sheet of ice that could break off, uh, literally break off. And uh, you guys do understand that if that happens, that's almost like a continental shift. You do realize that. What, it, let me give you an example. If one of the smaller ice sheets broke off right now, there would be a tsunami that would likely cover South America, most of South America. Now, it wouldn't stay there, of course, but water would pass over South America. Water would pass over Mexico. Water would pass over California, all the way inland, right, to the USA. This is what, um, this is the time we're in. They have a, if, if, if it happens in our northern regions, then the Atlantic is going to be destabilized very quickly. This is being watched right now at this time, right? So I'll do my best to keep you guys updated. Um, this is where we are. There are a lot of people who don't know about that. But listen, due to the storms, there's no need uh, to start telling everybody that. You know, if you, the average person cannot deal with multiple problems like that, right? There's nothing anybody can do about those ice she sheets breaking. They can't do anything about that. But the waters are heating up fast, right? Um, and this is going to melt off some of the uh, these stable points, in the ocean that hold these ice sheets up. So they're watching them. They're pulling equipment out. Uh, to my understanding, they started that last night, pulling equipment out uh, of certain areas underneath these ice sheets. They have to pull it out. Uh, some of the equipment they can't even touch. Uh, they don't want to cause anything else to become unstable. 
So something being watched very closely. It has never been like this before. Um, let me give you a comparison of what, what the situation is. Imagine five people holding up a house, right? The same thing is happening with an ice sheet. The ice sheet is melting from below. And which means instead of five people, shortly they're going to be three people. Then instead of three, they're going to be two. Then instead of two, there's going to be one. And when that one person is gone, well, that's it. The entire, that shelf, the ice shelf is going to shift. And when it drops, it's going to be, it's going to displace trillions of tons of water. Trillions of tons. That's going to make for a pretty big uh, and consistent wave. So that's being watched. But I will keep you guys posted. Hopefully, hopefully it, it will. You know, it's been degrading. It's been eroding by way of heat this way for a couple of years now. And um, it could hold out for a whole other year, two years. I don't think it will, but it could hold out for another two years. You don't know. I just know that they are watching it very closely. Currents in the oceans are becoming hotter and hotter. And it looks like, it looks like we face this unavoidable issue. As the ocean temperatures heat up, the currents are going to carry that heated water right to those ice sheets, right below them. So you see there's really no way out of it. As the temperatures heat up on the planet, this summer, as we get closer to summer, specifically the Gulf temperatures, as they continue to heat up, because that current flows outside of Florida, right up the Atlantic, right right up through the Atlantic, into the area where nobody wants them to be, right around those ice shelves, and, um, and, and downward likewise in the Pacific. As summer hits near the USA and near South America, the waters are going to heat up in that region, and they are going to be the melters of ice. So if they heat up like they did last year, that ice sheet will not survive just so you know. And according to projections, the temperatures are going to be hotter than they were last year. Much hotter. So now you know what's being faced. Would that be the water event? You better believe it. Absolutely. It would be the water event. Right? That would be. That would affect every continent on the earth. That's too much, uh, you know, too much water displacement. It's very dangerous. But back to the floods of right now, you guys watch your local weather forecasts, please. Just, just if you haven't watched it, right, bring yourselves up to date so that you can confirm that you're in an area. If it's raining where you are and you're on the East Coast, you need to check out your, your uh, forecast. Please do that. Do that so you can have an idea of, of what you need. Right? There are people's homes that are flooding right now as we speak. This storm is slowly moving to the east, slowly to the east. So please keep yourselves updated. Now, I'll likely be on here shortly, on COT here shortly, back on Channel Zero. Uh, everybody should be able to pick up Channel Zero uh, without effort. It should be clear. Hopefully it's clear. But you guys keep yourselves updated. Keep everybody else updated, okay? This is my go-to channel. But I don't have uh, anything scheduled. I just come on here and talk sometimes, okay? So um, that's what Channel Zero is for. So if something is happening around the world and you haven't heard from anybody else or coming on this channel, Channel Zero, not the, not Mixler, not COT, but just Channel Zero uh, on the COT website, I'll come on that channel to disclose or talk about some things with you guys. All right? So... Um, I might be on in about an hour or so, depending on how events go. I'm tracking the weather. I'm doing that by way of a article. You can access that from the homepage uh, to see some of those states I mentioned. Uh, it's actually in that article. Uh, it's a very short one, very concise. It's not, you know, a lot of stuff in there. I'll put a timestamp on there for each uh, update because I'm tracking this storm. This storm has caused some real damage for a lot of people. I'm certainly praying for them, those in those, uh, those in the affected areas, and uh, I am attempting to reach out to some of those in the areas that are bad, bad. Okay, 
in certain states. So I'll list those also. All right. God bless you guys. You guys hang in there. Keep each other informed, updated. And um, I may see you guys here briefly, a very brief moment. All right. God bless you.